الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters when the prophets of Allah went through hardship, they called out to Allah and never ever gave up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about some of them in Surah Al-Anbiya. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ they definitely used to do a lot of good deeds. They used to do a lot of good. And they called out to us constantly, Ragaban wa Rahaban, hoping fully in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fact that He will respond to the dua. And fearing the wrath or the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they were always humble. They were always filled with humility. They always surrendered themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how many of us call out to Allah filled with humility? How many of us keep doing good deeds? And then we have hope that Allah will answer the dua. When the time is right, it will come. If it didn't come yet, either the time was wrong or the thing we're asking for is not good for us. Remember this, my brothers and sisters, look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet Nuh, may peace be upon him verse number 76 of surah al-anbiya wa nuhan idh nada min qablu fastajabna lah remember when nuh the prophet noah called out to us before and we answered his prayer subhanallah so allah is showing you they who are better than you called out to us as well and we answered their prayer it took a while allah knew when what they wanted would be given to them but allah says we answered their prayer. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that about the Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, verse number 83. Remember when the Prophet Ayyub called out to us saying that I've been affected by harm and you are the most merciful, the most kind, the most compassionate. Amazing. He's using the names and qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is afflicted with so much of loss. He says, oh Allah, you know what I'm going through. You know the hardship I'm going through. You are the most merciful. You have declared that you are the most merciful, most compassionate. Please help me, O oh Allah. In fact, Ayyub alayhi salam didn't even say, please help me. He just said, O oh Allah, you know what I'm going through. Allah says, we answered him. فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِن We answered his dua, his prayer, his supplication. And we took away that which was harming him. Wow. How many of us lose hope in the mercy of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, he too called out to Allah and Allah says, Fastajabna lah. We responded. Look at Zakaria alayhi salam. He didn't have children. Many people don't have children. May Allah bless you with children. Zakaria alayhi salam never lost hope. He didn't have this offspring he was looking for. He kept on making dua and he says, Oh Allah, you know, my hair is gray, which means I've been calling out to you for years on end and my hair is gray now, but I still haven't lost hope in your mercy and I'm still going to call out to you. When you make dua to Allah, there is a contentment that should overtake your heart. You should be overcome by this beautiful contentment because you know, I've called out to the most merciful. He knows what's better for me. If he hasn't given me, it's not good for me. But I must keep on calling out to him because if you've called out to him by virtue of the calling, you may be granted paradise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there came a time when we gave him the child that he was looking for. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of all of these duas. Uh, and the reason is for us to learn a lesson from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Contentment. We move on to Surah Al-Hajj, where Allah speaks of the Hajj. 
And Allah speaks of something very interesting. You see, if you'd like contentment, learn to respect those things, those times and those places that Allah has given respect to. You cannot come in the month of Ramadan and forget that this is Ramadan. Although we are worshipping the same Allah outside Ramadan, but definitely someone who was brought closer to Allah during the month of Ramadan and they've respected the fact that they were in the month of Ramadan, it's a sign of some form of connection with Allah. Allah will grant you contentment long term if you follow that through. You know, people who commit sin, sometimes those in the clubs, they will tell their mates in the clubs prior to Ramadan, you know what? You're not going to see me for a month. Why? Because it's Ramadan. I'm sure you've heard that, right? Uh, now, to be honest with you, that is supposed to be throughout the year. But I would say at least this person is giving a little bit of respect to the month of Ramadan. We now need to remind them that when you get out of Ramadan, you don't go back into your bad ways and habits, but rather try and continue in the, in the goodness that you came through with. But what you do in the month of Ramadan, if you left your bad ways and habits forever, you would have achieved long-term success. However, my brothers and sisters, a person who continues to drink and to do whatever sin they were doing, even during the month of Ramadan, it, they will never ever achieve contentment. It will be snatched away from them. It will never come. The same applies if you go to Mecca and you commit a sin in Mecca, it's different from committing the same sin somewhere else. You go into the masjid, the house of Allah, it's a sanctuary. Allah has granted it a certain level and status. How dare you go and say abusive words in the house of Allah? You wanted to commit the sin and you went to the house of Allah to commit it. No, that is very bad. So when you go to Mecca, when you're in Hajj, this is Surah Al-Hajj we're talking about. When you go to Hajj, make sure you don't swear, you don't cheat. Allah says this in the Quran. فَمَن فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ Allah says those who are going for Hajj, they should not engage in immorality, they should not engage in sin, they should not engage in arguments. That doesn't mean those things are allowed outside Hajj. But Allah is mentioning it about Hajj because it is more sinful to engage in those things in a place that is considered so spiritual, so elevated by Allah. So this is why if you want contentment, respect the times and the places that Allah has granted honor to and respect to. Similarly, those who are uh, teaching you the deen, those who are... Uh, trying to earn the pleasure of Allah, respect them too. Respect mankind at large. So my brothers and sisters, listen to this verse. Allah says, ذَٰلِكَ وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِن تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Indeed, those who grant respect and honor to that, to, the, to that which is the sanctuary of Allah, to the sanctuaries of Allah, it is a sign of piety in the heart. When Allah has given a place virtue, you need to remember if your heart has a little bit of piety in it, a connection with Allah, you will grant that place its deserved respect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Then we move on to Surah Al-Mu'minun. MashaAllah, the opening verses of this surah will bring about a lot of contentment if we were to read it and adopt it and teach it to others. Because Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Successful are the believers, those who concentrate in their prayers. Try to concentrate. How would I achieve concentration in my prayer? So Allah is saying successful are the believers, those who pray with maximum possible concentration according to their level. Everyone's level of concentration is different. You want contentment? Work on your concentration in salah. How will I achieve that? So Allah continues to say, الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Those who, who stay away from, those who turn away from that which is futile. That which is futile, you stay away from it. Those who give zakah, those who cleanse themselves, those who purify themselves, those who give charity to the poor, they reach out to those who don't have with what they have. Those 
who protect their private parts. They don't commit adultery. Those who fulfill their trust, they, they fulfill what Allah has entrusted them with and what people have entrusted them with. Those who fulfill their five daily prayers. So when we do all of these things, we will automatically be increasing the concentration in Salah. And through that, we will achieve contentment and success. When you enter the house of Allah, if it doesn't bring about contentment within you, what more do you, meaning what would you like to have there? It should bring about a beautiful contentment. My brothers and sisters, the next time you enter the house of Allah, remember, forget about everything. Concentrate on Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Concentrate on what you're doing, the pleasure of Allah. Allah does not need your acts of worship, but you actually need those acts of worship. Amazing. My brothers and sisters, when you occupy your mind with that which is unnecessary, you lose concentration and you lose contentment as a result. Imagine a person who sits and watches pornography. May Allah protect us. What happens to their minds? These minds become preoccupied with so much. And then you want concentration in salah and then you want contentment. You're not going to get concentration. You know, images will keep on coming in front of you when you're trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, remember to cut out that which is futile. When you look at too many images, you're into all the movies and all the games and everything so much that you've forgotten the times of prayer and you're into it more than you're into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What contentment would you like? You won't even have concentration in prayer. Forget about the concentration, you won't even pray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So remember, cut out that which is futile. It doesn't benefit you. It's a waste of time. Anything that's a waste of time, learn to cut it out. You'll be happy. Do that which is constructive. Use your time responsibly and see what happens. Allah will open your doors in the dunya and the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us responsibility and may Allah grant us concentration in salah and happiness and contentment. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Al-lazina amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikri allahi ala bi dhikri allahi tatma'innu al-qulub.